Hi, welcome to a short video on the modeling or training data and interactive visualizations. I'm Ashish Mathur, and that's the link to my website where you can view solutions to other MS Excel problems. So let me just first start by explaining what the data set over here actually looks like. So uh, this is the employee data set of a company wherein I have employee code in column B over here. In column C, I have whether the employee is active or has left the company. That's the date of birth, age, date of joining, the location from where the company, uh, from where the act, uh, where the employee actually works, the division in which he works, the cost center where he's working, the designation, and the grade. Now, this is a small data set of no more than about 750 odd rows or so, and um, there's one line assigned to every single employee of that company. Okay. On another worksheet over here, I have something called the training data, wherein I have the employee codes in column B. I have the training date from training date to whether that program was an internal or an external program, uh, what the training program name was, what the training location was, and who the service provider was and who the trainer was. So once again, it's a simple data set of no more than about 2,600 or rows of data. and here in every single line item represents one training attended by that employee on a certain set of dates. So if employee number 20 attended trainings, uh, attended five trainings from 2007 till February of 2014, then there'll be five line items appearing for that particular employee. So this training data set is from um, February 2007 till February 2014 for all locations which this company is present in India. Now. Um, Given this data set, uh, what this company actually wanted to do was they wanted to slice and dice this training data and um, you know come up with the insights from various perspectives on let's say on repeat employees and on new employees that got trained and what's the um, what's the analysis across locations, divisions, and so on. You know while they've been working with pivot tables um, uh, extensively to derive what they wanted, they could not actually go into the level of depth that they were looking to go into. So what they actually used to do was on the training data sheet, write a host of wheel of formulas in spare columns over here, fetching grade, division, date of birth, date of joining, so on and so forth from the employee data sheet. And once they had the master consolidated data over here, they then select the entire data range, including the spare columns that they would have added via the wheel up, and then uh, you know pivoted this data. Now the common column between both these data sets is the employee code column which is in column B over here, and it's in column B over here once again. Now, given this data set, I wanted to actually do a lot more analysis, and therefore I chose to use Excel's business intelligence features. Now, since my analysis is fairly comprehensive and I cannot run you sheet by sheet, I'd like to run you through my favorite questions which I could answer uh, on this data set using BI, Excel's BI tools. Now, before I get into what my favorite questions were, I first like to actually just run you by the methodology that I adopted for solving this problem. So the training data has been analyzed using using the business intelligence tools of MS Excel. The specific BI tools used are Power Query, Power Pivot, and Power View. Initially, a lot of analysis has been done with the help of the first two tools to study the most critical aspects of the underlying data. Once the analysis was completed, key performance indicators along with interactive visualizations were studied using the third BI tool mentioned above, which is Power View. Now, in this brief video, I'd like to I'd like to walk you through the worksheet in which I could derive answers to my favorite questions. Now, some of my favorite questions are listed in the next worksheet over here. So, a few of them actually are: How many unique employees were trained year on year? How many unique programs were conducted, and what was the program frequency year on year? So. For programs conducted, I wanted to know how many unique programs were conducted and as well as program frequency. So if a certain session got conducted two times over, it should be counted as two times for every single session. So I wanted to know what the program frequency for every session was. What, what are the average training days per month and average training days per employee year on year? Division and grade wise break of total employees trained of a certain region in a certain year and how many programs did these, pro did these employees attend? Of the total employees trained, what is the breakup into new new trainees and repeat trainees? Of the first-time trainees, how many were trained within the first year, second year, third year, and fourth year of joining? 
what is the average minimum maximum gap in the days between trainings how many and 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 which employees were not trained year on year of these how many have not been trained till date of these how many have not been trained in this year but were trained in earlier years and of these employees not trained in a certain year how many joined in that year itself do any locations have a skewed ratio of employees trained to training programs conducted and what are the most popular training programs what days of the week are business uh, are busiest in terms of participant attendance and so on as i mentioned even earlier these are only a few of the many questions which i have been able to answer via the bi model that i've created over here so let's just jump into um, seeing some of the answers to some of these questions so on the excel version selection i choose uh, 2013 professional plus version because Uh, I'd like to show you um, a few questions answered via Power View or interactive reports. So once I click on this, I uh, from from this sheet onwards will be able to see a few of um, um, uh, interactive charts that we've been able to create to answer a few uh, answer some questions mentioned uh, before. Okay, so if I head on to the summary sheet over here, uh, in the three miniature charts over here, you'll actually get to see how many employees were trained year on year, right from seven eight till the year twenty thirteen. then once again year on year what is the total number of programs conducted what's the program frequency and a line chart showing me year on year what is the training days per month and what over here is the average training days per employee now as of now you may not see a lot of relevance of clicking on any one chart and seeing the others getting highlighted as well but just as regards functionality i'll show you what you can actually do over here so every single piece of chart that you see on this particular slide are, are, are all cross filtered so for the year 2013 2014 if i actually click on this particular column for 341 only that one gets highlighted the other ones get dimmed that's point number 1 second all the other charts on that particular slide automatically get cross filtered now as mentioned this is right now not of much use because we just see two points over here and therefore there's no there's not much of information we can derive from this let's just see what the advantage of click through is on in in further sheets so on the next sheet which is employees trained part 1 i have uh, three panels of charts over here the first one is uh, a group of pie charts one for each year where in every single slice of that pie basically shows me how many employees were trained in different divisions so as an example in 2013 14 37 people from the admin department were trained uh, Three from IT, fourteen from production, and so on. Now, on the right hand side, right, right hand side pan, um, column chart over here, we have one column for each location. So that's Delhi, that's Gurgaon, and that's Mumbai, and with the number of employees trained in each of those locations. And yet, um, another column chart on the right hand side shows me year on year what are the what are the programs conducted and what the program frequency is. Now, at the extreme right hand side over here, there's something called filters. Where I have um, a few more selections that a user can make, so he can choose any specific division if he wishes to over here. Likewise, he can choose any specific grade if he wants to over here, and so on. Now, to keep things simple, I have for all these filter, different filters selected all as the option, but for location where I've chosen only Gurugram, Delhi, and Mumbai, which is exactly why in the second panel over here you see only the three locations of Gurugram, Delhi, and Mumbai. Now let's just see what the use of uh, click through over here actually is. So for the year 2013, 2014, I see that 75 people from Kurgaon were trained. Now when I click on this particular column, I get to actually know in this in the same year for the 75 employees from Kurgaon that were trained, how many programs were conducted for them, which were 24 in number. And look at the pie chart over here on the left hand side. For the green slice of that pie chart, you will see a dark green portion and a light green portion. So, if I hover my mouse over the dark green portion, it basically tells me that of the total employees trained from the sales division, which were 43, 22 happened to be from the Gurugram region. So, all charts over here, as I mentioned even earlier, are cross filtered. If I click back on that again, I come back to where I started from. So, let's take another example. In the year 12, 2012, 2013. there were 50 people trained uh, who got trained from the admin department if i click on this i'll actually get to see what the breakup of 50 is so 
in the so in Gurgaon of the 50 employees of, of, of the 50 people from admin that got trained, 37 of them were from Gurgaon. Right, so that's how it actually works. By by being able to click through on any specific component of any chart on this worksheet, I can actually uh, get insights from the other charts as well. Okay, let's take another example. If I go on to the next worksheet, which is employees uh, train part two, herein I've uh, sliced the data more in terms of first and repeat employees, first time and repeat repeat um, employees. So year on year over here, I have uh, three columns. For, year, for, for each year, each column over here represents the first time trainees excluding the new joinees. Then over here we have the, uh, the new joinees trained and here we have the repeat trainees. So as one can see, as years passed by, the number of repeat trainees uh, far outweigh the first time trainees as well as the first time trainees uh, as well as the new, new joinee trainees. And on the left hand side over here, I have first time trainees uh, trained within the first year of joining, second year of joining. So, sorry, that's the first time, first time employees trained within the first year of joining, second year of joining, third and fourth year of joining, right? So as, as you can see, once again, as time passed by, the first time trainees trained within the first year of joining, it has, is becoming a larger number. I mean, though there are aberrations though, but if you see there were 18 over here, 25 over here, which comes to 33 over here, 54 over here. So in the later years, it's steadily been increasing. Okay, then on the right hand side over here, we have what is the minimum average and the maximum uh, number of days that have transpired between any two training year or year. So if I hover my mouse over this, maximum gap in days between trainings was 1,844 in the uh, training year 2013-2014. Okay, so on the next uh, sheet over here, we have the analysis of employees not trained. So this is a typical card style format where at the bottom uh, over here, I can select any one specific plank. Let's say if I choose 2008-9 over here, the data over here shows me for 2008-9. and nine. So what this actually tells me is that in the year 2008-9, there were 134 employees not trained. Of the employees not trained in this year, but trained in earlier years, there were 53 of them. Employees not trained till date since the time they joined is 81, and that's 43 over there, right? Um, okay, then <clears throat> let's look at timeline slicing over here. So on the timeline slicing over here, I have um, on the x-axis the employees trained till date. So that's, and on the y-axis I have programs conducted till date. Now. Every bubble over here is for a different location that my employees work in. And the size of the bubble over here is directly proportional to the number of employees trained in that particular location. At the bottom left hand side over here, I have a simple play button, which when I click on, I'll actually get to see uh, a, uh, a slide, the slider scale move all the way from, all the, move all the way up from 2007, 8 till 2013, 2014. And along with that, the bubbles will also move so let's see how this actually works. If I click on the play button over here, you'll actually see Gurgaon, which has the maximum number of employees, also had the maximum number of programs conducted till date, which makes sense. Now the aberration which I could observe in this data was that, um, let's look at Hyderabad and Nasik. Both these cities have similar programs conducted till date, but the number of employees trained in Nasik is far higher than the number of employees trained in Hyderabad. And if I wanted to actually view only these two, dim the rest, I can actually click just on these two. And you know, it becomes easy, slightly easier to focus only on them. So that's the bit of the power view or the interact interactive charting front. I just may want to run you by a few more sheets over here. Um, so if I look at the day-wise analysis over here, so here in along the y axis, uh, sorry, along the column labels of the pivot table, I have the different years from 7, 8, all the way till 20, uh, 13, 2014. On the row labels over here, I have days from Monday to Sunday. And for every single um, day, I further have what is the program frequency and what how, how many employees were, were trained on that particular day. So I took all the years and I wanted to actually know as to across the entire data set that I have, which are the busiest days for trainings for this company. It so turns out that on Mondays, the maximum number of programs get conducted 
and the maximum number of employees get trained as well. So Monday is a date when most people or most participants choose to actually nominate themselves for trainings. Uh, so Monday then closely followed by Thursday and so on. Right, so that's the day-wise analysis. Now, just to remind you, please, um, there was absolutely no day column appearing in our uh, training data set over there. Neither have we written any VLOOKUPs. The data is as it came from the system. So all this is actually happening by a power pivot formula. So there likewise is something called a division-wise analysis as well, wherein I picked up all the divisions on the y, on, on, on the row labels over here. And on the column labels, I have the different years. And for every single division I have, what what the employee strength and employee strength is, how many employees were trained, how many employees were not trained, what the program frequency is, training days, grades covered, employee locations covered, average training days per employee. And something similar has been done for the grade wise analysis as well. So for the different grades as well. So once again, grade wise over here, employee strength, employee training, programs conducted, frequency, training days, then something similar for locations as well. Now, something which may be of interest to a few of us is in analysis of employees not trained. So here in, I, in the pivot table above, I have year on year how many employees were not trained. So let's take an example. Let's take, let's pick up 2009-10. So in the year 2009-10, 164 employees were not trained. Of the 164 employees not trained, I wanted to determine how many employees were not trained in this year but were trained in earlier years, which is 83, and how many employees were not trained till date at all. So if I add up these two numbers, it adds up to 164 above. Now, of the employees not trained till date, how many joined in this year itself? So of the, of the 81 employees who were not trained till date, there were 17 people who joined this year itself. So, and these numbers for the year 2013, 2014 are 416 employees not trained, 326 not trained this year, but were trained in earlier years, 90 people not trained till date at all since the time they joined the company. Of the 90 people, 35 people joined in this year itself. Now, what I also realized was that just throwing the number 90 at somebody may be of no use unless he gets to know which those 90 people are. So what I then did was that in the pivot table over here below, in the report filters, I dragged in division name, grade name, location name, and training year. And in the training year, I chose in 2013, 2014. Now, in the employee codes that you see um, in column A, this is the list of all those employees who were not trained at all, which is 416. That matches with this figure over here above, 416. And for every single employee that you see over here, I have two further columns, which is what is the last date of training of employees not trained in this year, but trained in earlier years, and what is the date of joining of employees not trained till date at all. So if I simply highlight the dates over here, I see in the taskbar, I get a count of 90, which number tallies with the 90 which we got over here, which is the employees not trained till date. Now, I've chosen to show over here the date of joining simply because uh, I may want to know as to who are the employees who I need to schedule uh, for the very next training, depending upon when they had joined. So if I go down this list, you'll actually see that some employees who joined as early as 2010 have not undergone any training so far. So they need to be scheduled before anybody else. Likewise, what is the last date of training of employees not trained in this year, but trained in earlier years. So if I were to once again, simply select these items over here, I get, I get 326, which number exactly matches with the 326 shown over here for 2013, 2014, which is an employees not trained in this year, but trained in earlier years. Now for these employees, I've chosen to actually show what is the last date of training conducted. Once again, to know as to who of these should I be scheduling for the next training that I conduct. So there were some who were trained as early as 2010, but have not been trained since then. And therefore I need to schedule them before the others. So likewise, as I mentioned earlier, I have um, done, I have sliced and diced uh, other aspects of the training data set as well. And you can view this workbook from the link, which I will be sharing at um, the YouTube site. So that's what I wanted to run you through. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate your watching this short video.